Hello gardeners and thank you for joining us on Mid-American Gardener. This is the show where we like to talk about things that are happening right now in the garden, in the greenhouse, whatever it is, your question, we are gonna try, I mean, we are going to answer your question. Hi, I'm Diane Nolan and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois and I got my grades turned in today. So that's a big, that's a big deal. My area is cut flowers and perennials and I work in the crop sciences department, but I have three really talented, knowledgeable folks here with me. So we're gonna find out who's here and what their expertise and then direct your questions that way. Let's throw it over first to Dr. Bob Skirvin. I'm glad to be here again. It's, it's fun, fun to come here and show you things and, and, and talk to you. And uh, so one of the things I want to talk about is you know, almost every time I get here is I love grocery stores. I just really do. And I go to the grocery store and I love to go see what's there. Because and, and you're I, a fruit, fruit specialist, fruit so specialist. that's my, perfect. My specialty is fruits of all, of all sorts. And, and anyway, so I'd like to go see what's there. And, and right now, there's th things that are happening. You know, it's, it's season. They've got those wonderful little oranges. You know, little, little mandarin oranges. There are lots of those. They're really delicious. They're really quite cheap. You ought to buy those. But uh, one of the things that's in the store right now that it's actually been here for a few weeks now is what they call these ho holiday grapes. They, ca they come in a package like this, and the holiday grapes, and they're, they're big grapes. They, these are actually kind of small. And sometimes they're an inch in diameter. And uh, they're beautiful grapes, and they're incredibly sweet. I don't know if, if, I don't know if you ever tried them or not. They're really, really sweet. They're like candy. They're seedless. They're really good. Now, what's interesting about them is these grapes are grown in California. And, you know, you think about, well, isn't this wintertime? Well, it's kind of a strange winter, but it's still wintertime. And these, and these were picked very recently in California. They're grown in special, special areas They're just for... The name holiday grapes, they call them, that, is actually a cult of our name. It's like Thompson Seedless or something, they call it holiday. But they're, they're grown under plastic, and they aren't uh, treated especially different. So they, just, they, never get, they never get sprayed. They don't get, <coughs> they don't get any uh, dust from them because they're all covered with plastic in there, and, they, and they, they keep them. Somehow they, stay, they can stay on the plant longer, and they harvest them regularly. So these were harvested supposedly just within a few days and now they're in the grocery stores, and and when they sell them, they like to sell them these bags like this. I think these were four dollars a pound. They're a little expensive. I thought you watch them on sale; they're a little cheaper. And they want you to buy a bag, and I think the bag is like three or four pounds for that bag. You don't have to buy the whole bag. Just open it up, take what you want. Unless you want a whole bag, I don't care. It's your, it's your money. <laughs> well, they are. But they're really good. They're really delicious. They're really tasty. really good. You'll you'll like them. Very good. Well, thank you for scavenging the grocery store because <laughs> people need to know what to get out and buy right now. Okay, now the gal in the middle is Kelly Alsop. What have you got for us, Kelly? Okay, my name is Kelly Alsop and um, my expertise lies in house plants, but I'm passionate about insects. Um, uh, one of the things that I brought you today was is a Tillandsia. This is called an air plant. And if you notice, it doesn't have any roots. That's because where it grows in the tropics, it grows in um, the crotch angles of trees and it just absorbs the water and the nutrients from the air, uh, hence the name air plants. And they're really, really fun to decorate with. And I love decorating with these during the holidays. So um, you say, Kelly, they don't have any roots. How do you water them? Well, I am watering them right now. So if you look at this bowl right here, I already have some air plants, some smaller ones that actually have been soaking for about 30 minutes. Uh, I, uh, every three or four days, you wanna soak them 30 minutes uh, to an hour, and then you can put them back in your display. And I just have a little plastic, um, a little plastic saucer with some reindeer moss. And I just have my little uh, Tillandsias and with my little miniature watering can. And here my pine cone, Christmas tree, there you go. Um, but um, a lot of people forget, I think the biggest thing is they forget that these are actually plants and they don't water them. So if you come up and it's crinkly, then you go ahead and submerge it in water for a little bit longer than usual. But it can be a really fun plant to decorate with. Yeah, they're really beautiful. I would think we have cats. I bet the cats would 
They would have to put they, them a little higher. They would like them. They would yeah, like them. Yeah. And there's all different kinds. And uh, sometimes I say they look like little tiny octopuses. And um, they will flower, um, it, but it's fleeting. Mm -hmm. um, it's really just the beautiful um, the foliage that you grow them for. Great textures, and it's a nice, uh, not just, it's seasonal, but it can be for a yeah, long time. Yeah, definitely. You can take it from, you know, decorating from the holidays to... It almost looks springy, too, with yeah, the greens. Yeah, oh, definitely springy, absolutely. Great. Well, thank you for bringing those. Thank We're you. glad to learn about Tillandsia. All right, now next to me is John Bodensteiner. Hi, John. I'm a Vermilion County Master Gardener, and um, uh, I, I like just about anything that's green, and it, uh, it, if, I, <laughs> if I can, I'll grow it and uh, uh, enjoy it. Uh, tonight, I had a question from Sue. Uh, she has a, a shrub that she's not sure what is and or what what it is, and she said there's lots of tiny balls that I think might be flowers. Could the um, dust be pollen? The shrubs are full of dust. It seems uh, like way too much pollen for such tiny flowers. Uh, if if that's what they are, is it a problem? Well, if it is truly pollen, it's not a problem. Uh, what this is is a inkberry. A holly shrub. It's a native, uh, especially on the East Coast. It grows wild there. Uh, good, good for zone four to nine. Um, we still need, if you want the the berries, you still need a male uh, for every about every three female plants that you have. And um, the the most hollies will give you those nice red berries. This one here is called inkberry, and that's because the berries are black. And mm -hmm. um, if uh, the only other concern that I had, if this, uh, and I can't tell from the pictures, if this plant is near the house or under a tree, it could be some dust from uh, carpenter ants, carpenter bees, something like that that would be falling, falling down on the uh, on this plant. But I, I, you know, some plants really do put out a lot of um, uh, put out a lot of uh, pollen, so. If it is, you know, check it out in the spring uh, when they start to do that again. And if it is, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, mm -hmm. If it if it if it isn't, look up and if you know if, if there's something near that could be, you might want to check out the house or the uh, the uh, tree or whatever it is on top of it. Okay, very good. Well, in just a moment, we're going to go to the phone lines and we're getting a few of your calls. But before we do that, let's go to our Did You Know segment. <music> Tomatoes were once considered poisonous in Europe because the wealthy would eat them on plates high in lead content, leading to lead poisoning. Okay, let's go to the phone lines and we're going to go to line two with Venus. And it's a question about roses. Hi there, line two. Hi, how are you? Doing great. Uh, I have these roses I planted uh, last summer. And it's a knockout roses mm -hmm. and uh, forever roses. Okay. What I want to know is, I just let them bloom and bloom and bloom, and then I didn't do anything. And uh, right now they're fairly tall, and the of course the 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 cold, the weather had already kind of uh, freeze them up. Mm -hmm. So can I cut them this spring down to close to the ground? Okay. Can I trim them? All right. Several of us can answer that question. Who would like um, to start? I, you, you, you can wait till spring. Uh, that way you know what's going to be died, died back or what isn't. Um, you can trim them once it gets cold and they, mm -hmm. they go uh, dormant. Then you can, you can trim them also. Um, I don't know that I'd trim them all the way to the ground. I think I'd go no less than 12 inches to 18 inches. Um, and and keep them you can go on some of the branches that are real small you can take those to the ground but leave about three four of the main uh, stems coming up and leave them about 12 to 18 inches mm -hmm. I agree okay and one thing I would I say too back. is <laughs> this year has been a real late fall it, mm -hmm. and, and one of the things that when you start pruning plants you want to make sure the plants are really dormant mm -hmm. and so they're probably okay now and certainly if you wait until january they'll be fine they'll be dormant for sure but if you had pruned just a few weeks ago they might have started growing again mm -hmm. and when they start to get started growing then when it really does get cold like it is now 
that and those plants will die. Those new shoots are really sensitive, yeah. and it, it, it tends to, then you get disease, and, and they tend to kill the whole plant. Right. But as you said, in the spring, you know what's died mm -hmm. back, and that's really helpful, and you can tell there's a color difference mm -hmm. on the branches. So don't cut them all the way back, but you can cut some of the smaller ones and leave the thicker ones 18 <coughs> inches or so. So anyway, good question. Thank you for that. And we're going to go from roses to a question about asparagus. Rick has a question for us on line three. Hi, Rick. Line three. Rick, are you there? Feels like I hear something, but I can't get him. So we're going to try then line four, which is another rose question with Dan. <coughs> Hi there. Somebody talk to me. Okay, someone has their TV on. Just talk to us. Line three. Rick, are you there? Okay, well, should we talk among us until we get some questions? Just anybody who's on a line, just talk to me and I'll, and tell me who you are and we'll answer your question. Okay. John, I'm on line five. Wonderful. Okay. We'd love to chat with you, John. What is your question? Uh, I have a hydrangea plant that has bloomed in two years. I wonder if there's anything I can do to make it bloom, and when can I divide this plant? Okay, so hydrangeas. Who wants to tackle that question? Well, um, when hydrangeas don't bloom, the majority of the time it's when somebody has pruned them at the wrong time. Um, uh, because they bloom on old wood, you would want to prune them directly after flowering. Uh, um, transplanting them, um, I don't really see hydrangea as something that I would trans divide, but maybe transplant if you got a big enough of the root ball. And then when you do transplant it, you do kind of want to cut it back a little bit so it can make the transplant better. Um, I still wouldn't put it in too much sun. If it is like a um, mop head, um, mm -hmm. uh, the oak leaves can take a little bit more mm -hmm. sun. Right. But uh, yeah, it's usually incorrect pruning on the um, not blooming. The only other thing I could think of is a late frost. Right. But usually mm -hmm. it's incorrect pruning. And usually, I, I like to I like to cover mine a little bit in the fall, just so that, like Kelly said, they only bloom on old wood or some of the, the the older ones. And the newer ones, they've got some now that will bloom on new wood, but the older ones will only bloom on old wood. And so, if you can mulch them now, you know we're going to get some zero minus degree weather. And if those if that old wood is killed down to the ground, and all the old wood is dead and comes up from the ground next spring, you won't have flowers again, so. Mm -hmm. And usually the warmer the roots are, you know, if we have a really warm uh, winter, then we have more flowers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that extra added layer of mulch can be a really mm -hmm. good thing. Okay, thank you for your question, John, and for being there for us. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go to Fran's question on line six, and it's about Gerber daisies. Hi, Fran. Hi. I have a Gerber daisy. It's called Bighorn. It has a larger leaves than my regular Gerbers. Okay. And and a longer stem, and it blooms for me. It's a multi multi petal bloom, but I cannot get it to produce a lot of leaves, and then they get a lot of brown on them, and I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't oh. know that particular cultivar, yeah. but. I think you used to grow Gerberas in the greenhouse, didn't you, Kelly? I think they are really difficult to grow. Mm. I usually treat them as a potted flower arrangement, and once they're done, I'm done, because they don't like the heat, and there's not, I mean, even mm. though some of them that are coming out are a little bit more heat tolerant, they're not, they don't do very well. Um, as far as browning on the leaves, it's probably a disease. And I, I know you're going to think I'm cruel, but I would just throw it away, especially if it has a disease, because you're not really going to cure a disease. You have to prevent diseases. True. What would you say? The only time I had a good success with a Gerber indoors, I would plant it out in the summer 
and then bring it back in. And I had one live two years, but it did so much better in the fall. It hated the summer. It just sat around, but I didn't have any leaf disease. And I think that's a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've, I've had some that I'm on my fifth year now. I will be next yeah. year where I, t I just keep them in the pot. I take them down the basement during the winter, and let them go dormant. Yeah. And, let and go bring them out bring them out in the spring and that would help the leaf disease wouldn't it yep. or do you most, think it would most likely yeah you clean it off anything dead clean yeah. off put a little mulch on top so that any disease is there so when you water it doesn't splash up on new leaves so explain to her how how you have it go dormant i just i, I just take it down to the basement and forget it For <laughs> wow that's very till, intricate till spring <laughs> so um, you might try I, I that took Fran. Mine, i took mine down well the last two weeks in in November and it'll be down there until it gets nice in March and I'll bring it up water it real well keep it light. watered put it in the sun sun I mean in the basement does it have it has light in the basement light. yeah okay. it has some fluorescent lighting okay and that's what you do with amaryllis is to get them yeah. to re reflower so maybe that is what you need to do with that plant okay well good I'm glad we had a committee here to talk <laughs> this through well let's go to Rick's question, he called back on line four and it's about asparagus as I understand. Hi Rick. Hi. And what is your question? Uh, my question is about asparagus. I got a, I'm getting ready to sell a piece of property and I've got an established asparagus crop. They're all oh, probably five years and I'm wondering if I could dig that up and, and, and transplant it and move it to a new place. Are you gonna be doing it this fall like or? No, it'll probably be in oh. the spring. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> I, was gonna, I can say it might be a little difficult now with the, the ground. I'm sure it's going to be froze here in, in for the first couple of inches. Yeah, I don't see any problem with that. I don't either. Um, you know, that's what you do when you buy the bare roots in the, in the store is you're buying uh, transplanted plants. And so make sure that you do like when you, when, you, when you set up your new one, dig that trench, put a little pyramid in there, put your... Um, Spread your roots over that and cover it make and keep it deep because you're going to put up the soil over that and then mulch it. Uh, it. They are heavy feeders so I would get some mushroom compost or some good if you know somebody with good composted manure uh, make sure it's the good it's it's really composted you don't want to put fresh manure on it but uh, uh, they are heavy feeders so uh, get as much of the roots as you can. Um, and a five-year asparagus will be much easier to transplant than the ones I tried from my husband's yeah. grandfather, and they were 50-year-old ones. Oh, yeah. But we transplanted them. They were very heavy and mm -hmm. had several, mm -hmm. half of them. And they'll produce were. the next spring. Yeah. You'll have a but good produce But you want to make spring. sure it's pencil, you know, the thickness is large enough. I would, I would not harvest any of the first yeah. couple of years. Um, just to get those, you know, to let those ferns grow and they'll put more nutrients mm -hmm. and let those roots get reestablished. Uh, Even depend. though it's a five year old plant, it's, it's the it's stress the, of the transplanting stress. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we think you can do it, Rick. So, thank you for calling back. We have faith in you. Yes, we know you can do it. <laughs> well, let's take one more question before we go back to the emails. And Laura has a question about peaches, and this is on line three. Hi, Laura. Hi, um, my peaches this past summer um, had uh, the pit was hollowed out and looked rotten when you cut it open, but the fruit was wonderful. Um, I didn't know why the pit was hollowed and what I was doing wrong. I'm, I'm not sure either. I've seen that too. Sometimes you get uh, poor, poor pollination and it oh. doesn't set. And but since you don't eat the seed anyway, if, if, if it worked out well for you, just you just dig them out anyway and eat the peach. So, so as long as you're not trying to transplant that seed, yeah. it really didn't affect the fruit. Right. So, so poor but pollination. I, I think it's probably pollination. It's probably it, you probably need another variety or needed a it need, it needed a friend. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so there you go. Thank you, Laura, for your question. Now let's do some emails, and I'm going to start back with you, Bob. You'll have to uncover your email <laughs> with the grapes. Yeah, I, I got an email here, kind of an in interesting one, that this a person, uh, J Jan Coleman, said, I've got this plant I live in Cortland, Illinois, and it grew my last day. It grew 12 feet tall, and has orange spike balls this season. Thank you. What is this plant? Well, what, what, what you've got 
<coughs> is castor bean. And uh, a castor bean is really a beautiful plant. I remember when uh, I was raised in California, and we had a lot of castor beans out in California. They always thought they were really cool, big things. They had huge. John was just saying he had one in his yard that's 18 feet tall this year. They're huge plants. Mm -hmm. They can be huge plants. And they have these big spiky spiky seeds on them and it's a beautiful leaf. It's deadly poison. That's one of the things you really have to remember. Mm -hmm. Don't chew on it. Don't let your dogs chew on it. And all parts are poisonous. And all parts, yeah. The leaves, stems, seeds, everything is poison. Deadly poison. But it's a really beautiful plant. And a lot of people have it. And if you've never seen it, it's a really beautiful plant. It's very fun, <laughs> fun to grow. It's huge. And it's really pretty, but that's what it is. They've come out bean. with a new variety this year, that, or uh, the last couple of years, that are red. Oh, really? You know, that's oh. the green, but the, some of the, it's not as big as the green, the original oh, yeah, one. It might be easier to handle if it wasn't quite as big. Yeah. I had one of each this year, and it was really fun. The red was not as tall, yeah. but I planted it later. But I let mine go, and the big, tall one, and it's frosted, and it's really sculptural. Mm -hmm. And then, John, you cut yours back, mm -hmm. and then it's almost like cutting down a tree. It it's I, really I use my, there's my, some my trunks my on them. Yeah, but it's it really a fun plant to grow, and they yeah. grow fast and really warm. Yeah, it really fills the yeah. space. Yeah, and this hot your summer, will be impressed. Oh, the hot brand. humidity, oh, you could almost watch them grow. <laughs> they love it, almost like corn. You could watch <laughs> it grow. Okay, so thank you for that question and answer. And now, Kelly, what have you got for us? Okay, I have a question from Bonnie uh, in West Chicago about spider webs in her boxwood and evergreen bushes. Um, she thinks they're wolf spiders and she wants to get rid of them before they get into the house. Well, um, you're asking the wrong girl <laughs> <laughs> because I absolutely love spiders and um, I actually would in, uh, encourage spiders to live on my property. I build little insect hotels for the spiders to overwinter in. So this would be my instant insect hotel. But um, we'll just, it's not a wolf spider because wolf spiders do not make webs. Um, they are predator spiders. If they get in your house, it's because they're lost. Um, they'll stay outside usually. Um, they, they really do stay active during the winter. Um, if you don't want wolf spiders in your house, that's where you really think about um, caulking or, you know, yes, picking up all that debris that they may live in. Um, there were some really beautiful spiders this summer. The, mm -hmm. the black and gold spider that um, gets bigger and bigger and it's huge during the fall and it, re it eats its web and remakes it every single day. Just a really beautiful spider. So, um, Well, the wolf spiders, I always like the wolf spiders even in the house. Because they eat silverfish, they run around. They're they're always working. You know, they, they are. You, you might you might think they're annoying, but they're really working, and they're they're your friends. And I know. I absolutely yeah. agree. I and love so. seeing spiders and praying mantises in the garden because I know they're working for me. Yep. Okay. So if you ask you, questions like that and you want us to tell us to get rid of them, some of these things, you won't, you won't get the right answer. But anyway, thank both of you for that. And now, John, what have you got for us? I got a question from Paul, and he wants to know, uh, can you tell me what this plant is? And talking to a number of people, the, the closest we could come up with was sweet woodruff. Um, the best way to tell in the spring, if it's a low um, growing, uh, spreading plant ground cover with white little flowers, uh, you've got sweet woodruff. If it isn't, then we'll have to start over and go on from there. It could be, there's a couple other things it could be, but just looking at the picture, um, our, our consensus yeah. was sweet woodruff. And if you do send a picture, it's nice to see the top view, but sometimes it's nice to see a side view as well. So, But that's what we think it probably is. It's just a different angle for yep. me to look at. Yep. Okay, well, thank you for that. We do have one person we want to thank. It's Ryan Marshall's last show today, and we want to wish him the best of everything as he goes on to his future endeavors. So thank you to we Ryan. We'll give him some grapes. And we'll get him some grapes. <laughs> it's In probably too much, but oh, no, yeah. it is not too much, but thank you to him. Well, I want to thank each of you for being on. There's so much 
still in the winter time to talk about in the garden, Definitely. in the house, planning for the next garden. So there's always something to talk about. So thank you for bringing your expertise, each one of you. Even if it's talking about how great spiders are, we still want to hear about <laughs> <laughs> And going to the grocery store and all of those good things. Well, we want to thank all of the crew. We don't thank them enough because this is, you know, really our winter show and we'll be thinking about spring things. But during the winter, there's still lots to do. So we do want to thank each of you and I want to thank all of you for uh, just being great viewers. Continue to send those emails and call and we thank you so much. See you next time. Goodbye. I couldn't start anything else because I didn't know